Yo, 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 what's up guys? This is Loma, and this is gonna be another Bitcoin analysis video. If you haven't seen the other ones, I strongly recommend that you do. This video, however, is gonna be a new setup altogether because all the prior videos and all the other prior setups went to Target, so there's no point picking it up there. Uh, before we get into it, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Uh, like the video if this helps you in any way and of course big shout outs to our sponsor in Binance The number one spot trading exchange. If you don't have an account go ahead and make one Now let's get right into it. This was the last setup, right? We exceeded it bigly So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clear everything. So everything is clear so Just like last time we're gonna start on the weekly uh, I'm not going to mark out the 2019 high, the 2020 high, shit like that, okay? Why? Because I just don't feel like their levels are relevant right now. There has to be a ton of things that happen before we, you know, talk about the last, you know, high or, or the 2019 high, right? So, now that we're on the weekly, I'm going to go ahead and mark out a few key levels. All right. So starting with this high right here, okay. Why is that? We have this high marked out because this was the retest, right? So I guess you can put it right here. They're about the same, but you see what I'm saying? Breakdown, retest. This was the second, you know, weekly high before we really started tumbling down. And this was the, as you guys know, the bear market. So this is why I think this level is going to be relevant, okay? Similar idea to this one right here, right? So same idea, breakdown, this was the retest. It was relevant in the past. So that's why I have those two levels marked out. The same idea for both. So you see the kind of like the thought process there, right? The consistency. Jumping over to the daily, so we're on the daily. This is just some fundamental work, really, right? So just SR flip, right? Kind of same SR flip, and of course, right here the SR flip. Um, now this is a difficult area to trade because you're stuck between support and resistance, and it's in a pretty tight range, right? Um, we're gonna go ahead and go down to lower time frames to look at this, but just right off the bat, I just wanted to illustrate, you're pretty much trading in a ping pong area, right? So the last couple days, you're just ping ponging up and down. Uh, no real clear momentum. Obviously the trend is up, so you favor the bulls. Uh, dips have been very shallow, and you know moves up have been very overextended. So look into the four hour. This is where we're gonna do the bulk of our analysis. All right, so a couple key things that I've noticed, and this is probably due to the bull market more than anything. It's just that you're gonna see, I'm gonna go ahead and differentiate the line so you guys can more easily tell. All right, so you're gonna see that we are not sweeping lows, right? So anytime we make a low, it doesn't get really swept before moving up buyers are stepping in ahead of these lows right so people are eager to buy so it sets the low and it pumps and anytime that it gets near the lows it's bought up right so you see it here basically starting on the move up right so once we started breaking 11,000 even before that you can see more examples here right so right so we made the low uh, you can pick any of these lows really right so a bunch of lows happen right here we never test it again right and usually that doesn't happen for Bitcoin right uh, there, there's a reason why people say oh you know Bitcoin takes the path of uh, the most pain max pain whatever and that's kind of what people allude to where it's like all right even if you think you're safe you're not so again these areas have just been unswept just safe 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 and looky here i think this area is going to act the same way so i'm on board with the fact that i think this 
is going to provide a really safe entry for longs and I don't think they're ever going to be in danger. I do however think we're most likely going to just, you know, kind of just ping pong around here for a little bit, consolidate if you will, kind of just chill out on the parabolic move up. It's not necessarily breaking trend, right? You can call it reaccumulation, you can call it um, consolidation. My point is, I don't think these longs are going to be threatened yet. Emphasis on the yet, right? I, I do think somewhere down the road we do trade below 15.6 and I think all these lows eventually will get, you know, completely fucked too. But for the time being, I, I, I don't think that's the case. I do think that bullish momentum is very strong. There's a clear indicator that buyers are willing to step in, as you see here, right? Anytime price comes close to the lows, buyers are stepping in, right? Higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, move up. And it's not even just like a small move up, it's a fucking fat leg up, right? So when you see certain things like that, you just know that it's a bull market, right? You see people willing to step in front of the lows and buy, right? They're willing to catch this knife and there's not many sellers to keep pushing the price down. And essentially, you know, you can summarize it as, yeah, dude, there's more buyers than sellers, but the small details do matter. So back to something more actionable, right? Oops, let me delete that. So back to something more actionable. I think longs are the move here, right? I would enter any longs around pretty much in this cluster, right? So anywhere from 6.2 down to 15.8, I think you're solid to just, you know, discount average or slowly build up a position through there. Uh, I'm actually pretty on the fence. I don't even know if we'll get 15.8. Uh, I'm happy with bidding 16K down to 15.9. Uh, optimal entry would be the 15.7. I just don't think that's gonna happen. So again, I can't, you know, place a range right here, but it would be somewhere around 15.9, 15.8 as an ideal entry. Obviously, it pays to be a little bit more aggressive with your bids, shown by, you know, here, here, and more. So with bids right there, I'm gonna go ahead and actually put the stop loss below one, this, candle right here but also this wick okay so the reason for that is I'm assuming that even if we sweep these lows right buyers will continue to step in in front of these lows so maybe this low gets breached maybe I'm wrong right I still think that there's just not enough sellers to take out both of these lows without some type of relief in between that allows us to maybe de-risk the position or you know come up with a better risk uh, management and I mean if we break up above this range and I I really do think that we see closer near all-time highs um, I'm not even sure if all-time highs would be resistance right um, I, I can't imagine too many people wanting to sell right before price breaks into an area that it's never traded at before uh, the excitement the euphoria the FOMO uh, I'm sure there are institutions that want to hedge their longs at prior all-time highs, but I just have a hard time believing that all these institutions would dump price at the all-time highs. I think it's a good spot to hedge, I just don't think it's a great spot to eliminate all your exposure and get the fuck out of crypto, right? So that's what I'm kind of seeing with BTC. Uh, this is kind of what I'm expecting to happen, really. Uh, probably 16.3 and a pullback. And that pullback is where you want to buy. And if we don't get this pullback, what I'm looking for would be something like this, right? So something like a break above and some consolidation right here. And I'd be okay with entering 16.3, 16.2. But I want to see how price reacts as we break above 16.3 before I make that call, right? Uh, I'm a discretionary trader. Uh, sometimes the price, you know, how price moves will affect if I buy or if I, you know, 
don't buy as much just because not all candles are built the same right a lot of people are like oh you know like it, it hit 16.4 dude like you have to get in no if it hits 16.4 and it just you know puts a fat wick and closes at 16.1 well i don't know you know well that just looks like it swept the highs and now it's probably going to go for the liquidity below but if it closes at a 16.2 and low time frames are consolidating there's no real signs of weakness volume looks good you know funding isn't terrible hey you know that changes the entire landscape of how price is but yeah so those are my two thoughts on uh btc again if we break up above here it's all time highs like it's you know it's it's in reach it's already in reach but once we break this resistance right here the 16,000 area resistance there's there's literally air because bitcoin didn't trade in that area for very long i think it was like a couple days at most right we kind of just flew up and then flew down so this area is kind of like a vacuum right there's not much trading going on uh it was just kind of fomo up 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 and that was it Anyway, I'm going to keep that video there. Um, this is going to be the start of a new Bitcoin analysis again. So um, make sure you guys watch this. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you guys, as always, for watching these videos. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.